Hi, I'm Norman Perillo, a uh, furniture designer maker at Perillo Design and a uh, woodworking educator at Wood Skills. And uh, today I'd like to talk about the hand tool cabinets right behind me. The upcoming video will, uh, will delve into and elaborate further on how I've designed these hand plane cabinets behind me because my workbench is right here in front of me. So I've left approximately three and a half feet between the cabinets and myself. Now, I've had these cabinets for approximately 18 months now and the video has a slightly earlier version of the cabinets. There have been some small upgrades since. As we all know, a uh, workshop, a woodworking workshop, is always a work in progress, and so are so have these cabinets been. So I've had I've made some small, small changes. I've uh, the uh, the assortment of hand planes is a little bit different. I've added these two uh, torsion box uh, shelving at the back for the antique. Uh, mostly plow planes that I enjoy restoring. So I've, I've located, they're all user planes, they're all functional and user planes. Actually, this is my most recent one, a uh, beautiful coffin plane. So the hand plane cabinets are designed and incorporate the low profile design. And this actually uh, was part of the design to have it low profile uh, within a foot or so of the wall. So I, I would not interfere with my, uh, my work here with the cabinets closed or open. So I usually have them open when I have all these tools available to me. Now the actual tools have, uh, for the most part, are the same, but I've made some changes since. So I've added some, removed some, and I've added one of the, another tool holder here that you'll 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 find in the uh, in the video. If you um, if you have plans on on building your own uh, wall-mounted hand tool cabinet, watch the video, the upcoming video, and I'll I'll delve into and elaborate further on. Uh, why I've designed this way, what the particular tools I use mostly are, why I've included those tools in the hand tool cabinet, and you'll understand more about the direction you should go if you, uh, if you decide to build your own wall-mounted hand tool cabinet similar to this. So stay tuned and enjoy. I'm Norm Perillo from Wood Skills, and I'd like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through the furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. I'd like to talk about a, uh, an upgrade I've done to my, uh, my main tool cabinets in my workshop. These formerly had, uh, these two cabinets formerly had plain frame panel doors and they were not able to hold any tools in this part, just on the, uh, on the, on the cabinet itself. And I've also added this infill portion, I call it infill portion, to, uh, I had a gap between the two cabinets to, uh, to be able to uh, provide uh, slots for more of my planes. As I began to accumulate more planes, I'm slowly migrating my work from uh, machines and power tools to uh, hand tools. So uh, this is the exterior. And one of the features of the exterior is, uh, is that these are actually dry erase boards. So I'm able to mark down uh, steps. I'm, if I'm working on a piece of furniture, I can, I can cross off some of the steps I've done, I've accomplished. I've used this in the past, so these are actually, these dry erase panels originate from the original doors. I've taken the original doors apart and used the same dry erase panels. Uh, I couldn't find any to replace them, and I had no use for the original doors. So these are the handles, and so I've actually uh, recycled some of the parts from the old doors. So I'll uh, swing the doors open now. Uh, they're actually about three and a half inches deep. Uh, these are the uh, left door. They're actually attached to magnets. And it's the same setup I had originally. So I located the magnets in the same spot. So these are the, the doors. And uh, you can see most of my tools are, uh, they're all hand tools, of course, but they're mostly uh, marking, measuring tools, uh, center, center finders, and uh, some more of the same here, along with a uh, set of chisels, my uh, mortising chisels, and uh, solely uh, replacing some of these chisels with 
well, two cherry chisels and uh, an Eric's uh, Richter chisel. And I've got some aluminum uh, some spoke shapes, a curved base, curved bottom, and a flat bottom, and uh, some more tools. And I'll get into that. I'll focus in on each of the doors and I'll probably discuss how I've mounted all the uh, tools along with my hand planes. I've also, uh, also included a, a couple of attachments on the images of the, uh, I don't have good video, but I have some images of the original doors, the doors, and uh, before I, I actually had the, uh, the infill portion. So you can see once, once the doors are open, the infill portion stands out more. So it's, and this is how I normally work. There's a workbench right here in front of me. I have two large workbenches. This is my, uh, my second workbench and I worked mostly right here. So, so I'll focus in on the left door. So this is the uh, left-hand door, newly uh, upgraded from a conventional flat frame one. So what I'll, be, I'll do is I'll begin to describe uh, the tools I've mounted. These are my most used, commonly used tools. So starting from the upper left, I have a uh, some measuring guide, and this, these are the tools with the uh, the bronze maker's marks. Are tools that I've actually designed and made myself. So I have one, two three, four of these. And this, uh, what this does is it enables me to uh, accurately uh, mark a, uh, the distance from an edge or end of the board. And then, uh, in this case, 12 inches uh, availability. And then I can transfer this to uh, different components. So if I'm doing a series of uh, similar components, I can just use that mark. And, and uh, so it's, uh, it's, it comes in very handy for that sort of thing, rather than using a ruler and um, re-establishing the, uh, the mark every time. I just transfer and use this to carry over the, the mark. So, and this is a custom holder, and this, this little part here, this cherry part, keeps it from bouncing back and forth and rattling. Next is the uh, two mark gauges that I use more often than not. On, uh, I use these primarily for when I'm working on the dovetail joinery. This is a uh, precision one. I can micro adjust it, and I use these to uh, to mark off. And the reason I have two is because when you're working with half point dovetails, you'll have to readjust the marking gauge each time for either it's transferring the pins or using working with tails. You lose some precision when you accuracy when you're doing that. So I use two, and they're preset for uh, for offsets from from the half point to the uh, edge of the board. Reason I used to, and these are custom tool holes. Now, this, this particular cherry tool hole took me a little longer than any of the others because I had to, uh, they're, they're, they're fit. There's a neural attachment here that actually is fit right in, and uh, so is this one. Uh, moving along, this is a uh, wood square that I've also, uh, one of my own tools for all the design. I've uh, I made a few of them. I used to market these, but I've stopped doing that. I focus on furniture nowadays. It was fun to make. These, uh, a series of these. Aligning them is uh, a little bit difficult because you have to actually use uh, an existing uh, perfectly square square to uh, to uh, place this against to, to be able to align it correctly and then flatten the, the pins, brass pins. And that's a custom tool holder. So you'll find that these this this style of tool holder is common uh, for all the uh, squares under uh, purchase squares or shop made squares. This is a, uh, a depth tool. Design made this to uh, be able to measure uh, the depth of uh, holes and uh, mortises, uh, recesses in wood, and then transfer it to other boards. The beauty of it is it's cylindrical and it's only about 3 16 in diameter, so it fits in the smaller holes as opposed to a flat white surface that is commonly available, like in a ruler or something. So that, that works out really well. And this is a custom, this is one of the simpler tool holders. This is a center finder tool that I've also designed and made. And so it's got two uh, parts of a uh, rolled steel uh, bar. And this, uh, the way this works is uh, slides along the uh, edge of a board. And you mark, it precisely marks the center through a pin. It's an adjustable pin so I can it can deepen or as it wears or and deepen or lengthen it. So it uh, works perfectly every time for about three inch wide boards at maximum. 
a nice tool. It's not often used, but when it is, it uh, comes in very handy. Another square with its uh, unique custom holder. A bar gauge to be able to uh, to uh, measure uh, a case to align casework, uh, large feet, large or small casework, and keep everything square. So this would work on a diagonal, and then uh, one diagonal needs to uh, match precisely match the other diagonal, and the corners fit in exactly. And it's a fairly simple tool to build. Uh, you purchase these components, and it says maple in this case, so this worked out really well. And the holder is again it's custom for this. Down below is a set of chisels, the Barson chisels, Nerex and uh, Nerex Richter. These are uh, sort of new chisels to me. They're bevel edge, but they have a very th uh, low profile end, so the bevel is actually uh, best suited for dovetail work. And this is uh, more uh, conventional uh, two cherries, Ch uh, again bevel edge chisels, but so the land is taller. So the, the side profile, I should say, so I've been using it for, for dovetail work, but these are new ones are much better. And so that, that completes uh, the layout for this uh, left-hand door. And the depth was, uh, all the uh, measurements were, were taken with these particular tools in mind. This chisel rack is exactly two and a half inches deep, so it works out well. And the door itself is just a little bit past two and a half inches, allowing for the uh, the Baltic birch backer board and the uh, surface of the uh, dry erase panel. So everything was precise, and I tried to minimize the size of the door, the depth. Uh, so I think it's three and a half inches total. And it's held on the hung with piano hinges, which are fairly strong. So what I'll do is I'll move on to the, uh, the plane section in the middle, center sections, and then we'll move on to the right hand door. I'll talk about the, uh, the center portion now with the, uh, with the hand planes and the, uh, the new infill section. So I'll uh, start from the top. This is a, uh, these are, uh, I decided to mount, mount the hand planes in this orientation to save space rather than uh, a different way. I can, I, can, I can actually have more hand planes in, a, in the same amount of space using this orientation and they're mounted on the side. I don't have a blade facing me or anything like that. So it's worked out well. I've had the original cabinets for uh, a large number of years. So this, these cabinets are, uh, are not new. So starting from the top, this is a, uh, a five and a quarter, uh, uh, junior jack, they call. I use this. It's, uh, it's got a narrower uh, sole. So it comes in handy and has all the, uh, the fine adjustments of a Veritas plane. Uh, but a narrower sole and a little bit longer than the conventional plane. I think 11 or 12 inches long, shorter than a, a, a standard jack plane at 14 or 15 inches. But, so it comes in handy for some operations. Uh, this is a, a plane that's not used very often, but it's used for, for uh, rough work and uh, preparing uh, rough boards, a scrub plane. So uh, it actually speeds up the process of uh, flattening boards by removing, uh, quickly removing uh, hogging off wood. Usually uh, you run these along diagonally along the board. Along the length of the board, some uh, a small apron plane that comes in real handy. So it's a one-handed plane. It's light, it's small, but it does the job. It doesn't have an adjustable mouth, not necessary for what it does. This is part of a, uh, an antique uh, Stanley Forty Five plane that I uh, I have over in there. I have two other hand plane racks <laughs> with some more hand planes, uh, wood hand planes, transitional hand planes, and some larger Lee Nielsen planes. These are uh, blades that for my plow plane and for the uh, skew rabbit plane I have over in the other uh, rack. This is a uh, scraper plane, the Lee Nielsen scraper plane that I use for uh, highly figured woods. It comes in handy sometimes having a, a high angle uh, smoother, even at 50 or 55 degrees, doesn't doesn't quite cut it. Or so instead of using just a scraper blade, which gets hot and Kind of hard to maneuver sometimes. I use a scraper plane on larger surfaces. So that's, that's what that does. These are specialized planes. You don't really need to have it. But they come in handy when you do need them. An older number four that I've restored with a new, uh, I think it's a hawk iron or a new thicker, much thicker iron. And that works well now. The original, uh, these, this series of, of planes always had, or uh, cursed with small, uh, thin irons. So the strength, the rigidity was dependent on the cap iron. 
the workaround is to actually beef up the iron with the thicker iron. That helps a lot. That's a very usable plane. I have much better planes, much more precise planes now, but I that was my go-to plane for the longest time. This is a number three. It's smaller than a number four, and I use this a lot for smaller work. It's lighter, so you can actually, uh, it's again, it's a, a one-handed plane. It uh, comes in real handy. This this is a hawk iron. I uh, again, most of the planes, the, the older planes have replacement irons. They're quite thick now. They're about an eighth of an inch thick compared to uh, the original irons. Uh, transitional uh, coffin plane that I don't use uh, much anymore. I've sort of minimally uh, cleaned it up and all that, but it's uh, it's just something that more of a conversation piece. For me, no. These are uh, wood uh, molding planes with different profiles that uh, come in handy for, for some work. But what I'll do is I'll move along to the middle section after resetting the camera. So again, this is the, uh, the infill section. I had an extra nine inches or so between the, uh, the two cabinets. They were not doing much, so I decided to build this little Cabinet was a fun project, and I'm able to populate it with uh, some more hand planes as I began to accumulate more hand planes in my transition to uh, from uh, power machines to hand tools. I work, still work with power tools and machines, but not as much, and I'm getting away, so I'm more likely to pick up a hand plane now, either a bench plane or a joinery plane, instead of firing up a router, that sort of thing. So at the very top is uh, when I began with uh, joinery planes. This was my very first one. It was uh, so I cleaned it up a little and polished the metal. I used it. It's, it's a plow plane, so it has a depth adjuster, and it's uh, unfortunately it only came with a quarter inch iron, which which is fine because that's that's the iron I use the most: quarter inch for uh, drawer bottom grooves and that sort of thing, and uh, grooves for the backs of uh, casework. Uh, so the the fences are uh, adjustable. It's a beautiful plane. It's probably 150 years old or more, 170 years old. It's in very good shape. It hasn't hardly any cracks or anything. So I, I used that. And I couldn't believe how uh, nice it was to use. And then uh, just below that, I have uh, this is the very first block plane I purchased uh, when it began with hand tools, maybe 17 or 18 years ago, or maybe 20 years ago. This is uh, this is kind of, it's just a standard Stanley, low cost Stanley, but it works. I'll replace the iron on it, or possibly not. I just sharpened it and uh, tuned it. And uh, from you can distinguish the lower cost planes from higher end planes from the. Uh, you can tell them the machining is not quite there. It's uh, still has quite a bit of grooves. I mean, it hasn't been lapped or anything. Feel that. So there's a lot of work to bring this up to a level of a of a more expensive plane. But sometimes it's just more economical just to just buy an expensive plane and spend all that time. So I left it as is. It's flat. It's reasonably I flattened it. It's reasonably flat. So, so it's a it's a user plane. It's good. And this is a Nielsen uh, skew block plane. I use uh, I use quite a bit. So it has a this part removes and I can use it as a to create rabbits along edges of boards. It has a fence. Uh, I've, added, I've added the wood part and. Uh, and it works really well. It's skewed, so it glides along a lot better than a straight plane. So that's, uh, this is one of my later additions. It's a uh, it's a router plane. And it's preset now with a quarter inch uh, iron. And uh, because I was doing some uh, some uh, case work recently, and I had some stop grooves to make, so rather than firing up a router and a router table, I worked out a process to do this using uh, a chisel, uh, the router plane. I've also got a fence on it. I really haven't had the opportunity to use a fence much yet, but but I'm very impressed with how these work and how they're able to hog off work in a in a groove and a dado, I should say. It's very, very impressive. And once once you've uh, developed a process and a technique, it's very fast to do. So it's almost not even worthwhile to set up a rudder in a rudder table. Uh, this is my uh, go-to plow plane now. It's, uh, it's a Vertas, and the Vertas is one of the few companies that even make metal uh, body joinery planes. This is uh, plow planes. I've added the wood fence. It's preset with a quarter-inch iron. They use for uh, both uh, inletting, inletting backs into casework and uh, for mostly for drawer bottoms. Moving along, a couple of small antique marking gauges. This is a uh, 
This is just a beautiful uh, marking cage. It's, uh, it's antique and uh, has both brass and wood, and it's probably rosewood. I mean, they work just as well today as they worked back then. They're so simple. And this is a more interesting one. It's a little more uh, decorative uh, with the uh, fancy brass work. And it has two pins. So if you're marking uh, mortises, this will come in handy. So you can preset it for both pins and then uh, mark along. So I'll move the, uh, I'll move the camera over and I'll talk about this. This cabinet is identical to the other cabinet. The divisions are a little different because uh, I've moved some planes around over the years. And uh, so I find I don't have pre predefined or preset slots for each one. I just tend to use whatever's convenient now. Uh, larger plane or smaller block plane. So starting from the top, this is a, a low angle uh, vertex jack plane that I use a lot for uh, more uh, figured woods. It's uh, because it's low angle, it, it works better with uh, wood that isn't straight grain. It's large, has enough mass, you can use it as a small uh, jointer also. Very, very good plane. Just to hold that as one of uh, an earlier plane, an earlier vertex I purchased. It's, uh, Number six uh, fork, called the core fork plane. And this, I used to use this as my main uh, jointer plane, but I've since uh, acquired a uh, Lee Nielsen number seven, and I, uh, rather than number eight, number seven, it's uh, a real uh, jointer plane, so I uh, don't use this as much as a jointer plane, but it comes in handy. It's not as heavy as a number seven, uh, so you can use it as a super large smoother or a, a jointer plane. Just wanted to mentioned that the handles on these two planes I've just shown are Babinga. The Veritas used to use Babinga and they've since moved to a Torrified Maple. So you can distinguish the uh, older generation Veritas planes from the Babinga handles. Uh, moving along, this is a uh, number three that I use. Uh, I replace the iron in and uh, it's, uh, it's a good user plane. It's a smaller one. Planes are accumulated. Small almost plane. And uh, this is a number, this is a bronze plane uh, acquired many, uh, many years ago. Uh, it's quite a bit heavier than a standard iron plane. And it has uh, these beautiful uh, cocoa bowl or uh, rosewood handles. Very similar to the uh, iron plane, except for the added mass and uh, the blink factor, of course. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a good plane. I tend to have quite a few uh, Block planes, both uh, conventional uh, low angle and uh, standard angle uh, bedded at uh, 20 degrees block planes. I use these as small smoothers. Uh, this is a Lee Nielsen 9.5. I've got two of each along with the, uh, the skew block and uh, apron plane. And I actually might have three of one series. Uh, so I use this quite a bit as a small uh, a smoother, a one handed smoother. From my understanding, from going to Lee Nelson's website, they don't seem to carry this nine and a half anymore, so I'm not sure. Maybe look for another manufacturer if you really want one. I think Veritas has it. And then uh, these are the uh, low angle variants that I use. This is uh, probably the newer one, judging from the, uh, the cap. It's not as worn as the other one. That's, uh, that's a beautiful plane for, uh, for edge work. And this is... Uh, Another low angle, an earlier low angle of mine. And uh, my, uh, my more user uh, 9.5 standard angle block plane, for judging from the cap. As much as I've tried to polish these, once they've attained this patina, it's, uh, it's a done deal. I mean, you just can't get that polish back. I've tried polishing compounds and all sorts of things, so I'm not sure. Going, uh, moving along, this is a, a transitional uh, coffin plane with a uh, replace the sole on it, along with the mouth insert. It works, but it's, uh, it's not a go-to plane or anything. It's more of a conversation piece now. A uh, European style uh, smoother with a horn, and these don't work as well as a uh, metal body plane, this particular plane. It has a, a large mouth opening that I can't do much much to uh, correct, aside from possibly inserting a, a, putting a mouth insert in. I mean, it works for probably for uh, soft woods as opposed to hard woods. Uh, a number four and a half Lee Nielsen is my go-to smoother. So this is, spends more time on the on a workbench, my one of my two workbenches, than it does in the cabinet. But it's it's a wider than a four. It's got a considerable mass, 
It's a bedrock style, so I can adjust the uh, mouth opening from from without removing all the, all the components, the lever cap, the cap iron, and all, that sort of thing. So it's I've had this for a large number of years. <laughs> it's probably my most used uh, head plane. And you can see some of the parchment wax streaks. I use uh, I lubricate the soles with uh, sticks of paraffin wax, and that that, that really uh, helps the plane glide along better. Lately, I've been using uh, Vertas as a tool wax and a little tin, and I use that too. So I use both the paraffin and the tool wax. It makes a huge difference, but you have to keep applying it. So this is a uh, small uh, or medium shoulder plane. Vertas and I use that a lot to uh, tune uh, uh, rabbits and uh, along edges of boards when they're not perfectly uh, 90 degrees or not, not square. So this comes in handy or actually to create rabbits. But, uh, to create rabbits today I use uh, a, lot of, uh, a skew uh, rabbiting plane. It's a Vertas, it's over in the other cabinet. So it's sort of kind of attached to that one. It's a little more versatile. Or, uh, then, uh, so this is mostly to clean shoulders up. I use this for clean shoulders up. And that's, so that would be it. Yeah, I got some antique bells at the top. So I'm very happy with, uh, with how this has turned out, these cabinets. And, uh, I was concerned about the, uh, the construction. So I've, I've built them fairly lightly with lighter woods and the Baltic birch for dimensional stability and uh, strength. It's a half inch uh, sheet of Baltic birch at the interior and they're three and a half inches deep so they don't really affect my uh, my work. Uh, my, my bench is right here in front of me. It's possibly three feet away. So I thought I was concerned that the depth of the uh, the depth would uh, would uh, interfere with uh, my work but it's it's only three and a half inches additional to the original doors. So that worked out well and of course the dry erase panels. These are uh, Recycle from the original doors, and I use these to uh, make notes. Or so, moving along to the uh, right hand door. It's uh, actually identical to the left hand door, dry erase panel, it's about three and a half inch thick, 24 inch wide by 30 inch high, mounted on a piano hinge for strength. Research I've done uh, indicates that uh, this is actually equally strong or stronger than conventional butt hinges, so I was going to replace this, but I actually strengthened it with longer screws, and it seems to work well. So I'll just talk about this a little bit. The, uh, the holders and uh, all the tools. I like to work in uh, precision. Uh, most of my work is uh, casework with uh, small casework, Krenov inspired casework, uh, small on cabinets on stand and cabinets. My work is a lot smaller in uh, dimensions today than it used, formerly used to be. I like to work in uh, small, uh, small dimensions. Uh, so I have a lot of rulers and uh, I tend to use a lot of engineer squares in different sizes here. They're mounted. These are a uh, nice way of mounting them. So they slide in and then sit there and they're very unlikely to slide over and fall off. Different sets of rulers. I have even more. I have more tools in another area. But these are uh, my go-to rulers for length. Specifically this one is a hook a rule that I use to place against an edge and that works out well. That removes, uh, actually slides into that slot. And slides off. If I can get it off, so that's uh, so. This is a little uh, interesting uh, way of mounting these tools, these rulers. And I got, I used a little holder so with a slot to keep it from uh, rattling around. And then I uh, I've got a, a star combination combination square, I should say. It's quite heavy and uh, very high quality, and you can distinguish this from. Lower cost uh, combination squares from the weight, the mass, and the precision, and the uh, the actual rule is fairly thick, at probably an eighth of an inch or so. So that's uh, that's another similar mount as to the engineer squares. So it just slides in and sits on top. Moving along, this is a uh, measuring uh, tool I have. 
uh, developed, similar to the one on the left cabinet, but shorter. I uh, use this to uh, mark measurements on, uh, on boards, and then transfer the same measurement to uh, different boards. So it comes in quite handy when you're uh, doing uh, multiples or uh, more than one similar component. So, so this is a, again a custom uh, mount for this uh, for this tool. All the wood I've used is uh, raw Optex and salt cherry. Uh, moving along is a small uh, aluminum uh, level that I use. I use. I tend to use that size for my work because it's small and handy and sits on top of the smaller work. The uh, Shinwa level gauge. This is a uh, high quality, very heavy precision tool. Just mount that. And the holder keeps it from rattling around. This is a custom holder. This holder is interesting. Another bevel gauge. And this is a conventional, uh, I think, rosewood and brass. But this has a pivoting uh, lock on it. So, so I can pivot this over, release it, and hang it back and uh, set it up again. But I keep it from rattling back and forth. A larger square. I've got couple of more, larger, even larger ones, but I tend to use this size for most of my work. It's, uh, and I've, I've matured that it's accurate, this particular square. So that's another holder. Spoke shapes. I have, uh, I don't have any spoke shapes. I've got an older, uh, more cost model. This is, these are my go-to, uh, flat bottom, uh, and my curve bottom, Lee Nielsen uh, spoke shapes. I think they're, uh, were designed by Brian Boggs. This is a holder I've developed. This is an original holder I had somewhere else, but I've adapted it to this uh, this door since. That keeps it simple. Uh, these are uh, these tools are quite interesting. These are I purchased them years ago. They're uh, I think they're clearing them out somewhere. I can't remember why, but it, they're very pre precision tools, high precision tools. And they're, uh, what they are, are angle gauges. Uh, that they're preset at different angles, so they lock in at different angles. For example, 22 and a half, 45, 67, 90, but they're incredibly accurate and precise. Uh, so I've actually measured them against other, other tools, more precise tools, and you can believe the precision. So, so this is a quick, uh, quick and dirty way of, uh, of getting a, an angle that, more of the, the common angles that we use in woodworking. So they're, uh, they're, they're imported from Sweden, and uh, the thick rule, and it's, just, it's a nice tool. So I've got two sizes. I think they came as a package when I purchased it. So, so I've got this cool holder that locks both in and uh, pivots, and uh, that would be it. I think that's fairly full. So I'm not going to add anything to that. So again, I'm very happy with how this has turned out. The doors are not interfering with any of my work. It's got magnetic catches by uh, just uh, using the same ma magnets from the original. I just uh, replaced these parts on the new doors and it has the, uh, the dry erase panels that I, I'm able to jot down build sequences and notes of, uh, of projects I'm working on so I can check them off as I go along. I've demonstrated this in uh, other videos I've done on furniture design. On, on the building cabinets, another carryover of the knobs. I just wanted something that contrasted completely from that. I'm very happy the doors aren't that heavy. I don't uh, expect them to sag or anything because of the continuous length of this uh, piano hinge. So I'm uh, very satisfied with how this has worked out. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And So please subscribe to my YouTube woodworking channel where I share more of my woodworking techniques, my, uh, my woodworking philosophy, my thoughts on woodworking and uh, all the challenges I've experienced and uh, I introduce some of the uh, new forms of woodworking I've discovered. And also visit uh, woodskills.com where I have a good selection of uh, my books both in print and digital format on woodworking. 
and uh, all my online courses and uh, I offer also offer some woodworking plans. I have maintained a, uh, a regular blog on uh, what I've got going on in my workshop and, uh, and woodworking in general. So enjoy!